The terrace rows of rice fields at Kebimba Rice Kim in the sleepy rhythms of Bujiri district offer a breathtaking beauty of this lush landscape. Chibimba was established by the government of Uganda with assistance from the government of China in 1973 as a venture to bolster rice production. The scheme fell into a tailspin and wasted away, giving way to derelict structures in the 1990s that bore the lasting vestiges of the post-colonial industrial pulse. The story of Chibimba's demise fitted into the script of the monumental collapse of these industries in a country ripped apart by vortex of coups, anarchy and bloodshed. Chibimba's potential was rekindled in 1996 when Tilda Limited, a company owned by Indians of Ugandan origin, acquired the property from government and revamped it. Today it sits on a sprawling 10,000 acres and employs up to 2,000 Ugandans at peak time. Over the last two decades, the sector has expanded and now meets 80% of the country's rice consumption needs. The sector's growth has turned into an allure, charming more investors who in an archetypal capitalist setting are keen to bait for the windfall. Cut fights once seen in the cotton, fish and coffee sectors are now the unwritten credo of business in the sector. Government officials find themselves sucked into the squabbles in the industry that is now entangled in toxic palace politics and destructive poker games pitting importers of rice, millers on the one hand and domestic producers on the other. Is there a crisis in the rice sector? It has been uh, roughly estimated to be to the tune of almost 1.05 billion US dollars, which is pretty much 3.8 trillion Ugandan shillings. That has been the gain over the last 10 years. And now, since the erratic policy, Uganda is losing pretty much $60 million every year, both in terms of uh, 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 revenue loss for URA and in terms of uh, import substitution. So that is where the crisis is. Of course, we cannot meet the total consumption. And I don't uh, uh, say totally that we don't need imports and all that. But under what circumstances are we importing rice in this country? But the economy is really in the open. And even the first time when a, a, a tax waiver was given, the government was taken to court and it is still in court. It's open. NTV has seen a litany of documents, secret communications and spoken to actors in the industry on what is fueling the turmoil. On April 16th, President Museveni hosted at least 35 members in the sector and political leaders for a meeting whose agenda vacillated from a shrill of grievances, a repost from those accused, and request the highest office in the land to intervene. The meeting was based on a series of previous meetings which were held, which culminated in the meeting with His Excellency, where the proposal from the Rice Millers Council was to import rice. Uh, the recommendation was to import 120,000 tons of rice for a period of six months and uh, review it thereafter. The meeting at State House in Tebe that started at a quarter past 8 p.m. ended past 10 p.m. attended by ministers Vincent Sempija, David Bahati and Evelyn Anite, among others. At the meeting, tempers flared. Competing interests became apparent. At the heart of the conflict, Kibimba Limited Chief Executive Officer Ven Gopal Pukat says he is a request by importers of rice to government for yet another concession to import in the next six months at least 120,000 metric tons of rice at a reduced duty rate of $150, just about 540,000 shillings per metric ton. I pleaded with His Excellency that uh, please collect the actual data in terms of production, in terms of consumption, what the actual importation has been, and then take an informed decision rather than uh, getting to an ad hoc uh, decision based on uh, so much quantity of import because that quantity which I told you 120,000 is almost uh, when you uh, for six months if you multiply it by two for 12 months it's almost more than Uganda's consumption so it will displace domestic production that's common sense anybody can uh, understand that if government uh, stays consistent to the EAC policy then uh, there would be no issue now in terms of the people causing this issue, I think it is ideologically bankrupt government officials. This is a protracted fight that stretches as far back as 2014 when Uganda started to register a hike in imports of rice. New players threw their hearts in the ring of the lucrative sector. 
in came haggling over tax exemptions and duty waivers granted to importers, especially in respect of integrity of the process and who benefited, raking in billions of shillings in record time. Some domestic farmers allege that between 2015 and 2018, importers have, allegedly, in collusion with government officials, circumvented the system, enjoyed fat tax waivers, and in the process, the country has lost billions in tax for a gone. However, Philip Idro, the Rice Council of Uganda chairman, allays fears of the local farmers and challenges them to tighten their seat belts, stand up to the challenge of consumption demands, embrace competition, and appreciate the dynamics of a free market economy. Just like in the beginning, companies were given tax waivers, these things have happened. But I'm saying that's not the issue. The issue is, can we now reorganize ourselves that we are bigger and become sensible to each other? And the excitement is the farmers are coming on board. And the main reason why I'm saying there is a crisis, mm. in the positive sense, not negative sense, yeah. is that Kenya imports a million dollars a day of rice. I want that for the farmers. Are we doing it at the moment? No. The whole of this cry for us as farmers, we've got to be protected. Because for us, we are so helpless. We don't have the muscles to go and fight or meet the president or, you know, negotiate for those things. But for us, we don't have that as farmers. What we only need is that let the policies prevail. If there is a standard set, let everyone follow the standard. Farmers will grow rice today thinking that they're going to sell it at a good price. If tomorrow they fail to sell it at a good price, the next season they will grow something else. So for us in the rice sector, our fear is that we're going to lose, we're going to, our, the number of farmers growing rice will come down, meaning we will have less domestic rice produced in the long run. Domestic farmers like Dr. Agnes Atim Apia, who works with and supports rice farmers in northern Uganda, and then Gopal Pukat, say the importers want to untwist the president and government into allowing them to import rice that will wipe out local producers. They come with a small thing like, oh, I've got this big meal. They just want to hook something. They actually get even money from our country. And they walk away with it. And some of them actually have very bad records of duping governments. And um, I fear, as farmers, and I hope my government is not, you know, being duped, being duped by some of these very scrupulous investors. A perusal of the documents and strands of correspondences indicates the fight between importers and local farmers has been a long winding cat and mouse game, each appealing to reason and conscience of decision makers in the sector to no avail. The fight between Kibimba, formerly Tilda, and Fall Logistics, a company owned by two Pakistanis, has since shifted inside the marbled hallways. Ministers are also pulling rugs under one another's feet over the issue. For instance, on 30th October 2017, Finance Minister Matia Kasaija wrote to President Museveni in response to a directive following a meeting with four logistics representatives where the President had asked finance officials to craft a memorandum of understanding with the company guaranteeing that import duty of husked rice would be less than $200 per metric ton for the next three years. Kasaija told the President he wasn't clothed with power to ink this deal as such mandate was resident in the East African Community Council of Ministers. And I quote, the rate of $345 per metric ton on imports of husked rice is meant to protect the local farmers who currently produce about 237,000 metric tons of rice per annum. There are initiatives in Uganda and Tanzania to increase rice production so that the East African community is self-sufficient in both consumption and exports. Any change in the tax treatment Kaseja Ajut would undermine the objectives of the policy and affect many smallholder farmers in Uganda. And I quote, Your Excellency, we wish to point out that as a policy it is unfair and inequitable to grant one company a preferential rate in an agreement at the exclusion of all other companies in similar business. It contravenes the principle of equity and fairness. At the same time, it may lead to serious distortions in the market such as unfair competition and wiping out local players in the sector. Kasaja also argued that the earlier incentives had no real benefit to Uganda and outcompeted local rice farmers. On July 31st, 2017, Finance Permanent Secretary and Secretary to the Treasury, Keith Mokanizi, had written a brief to Kasaja advising, and I quote, it is unfair and inequitable to grant one company a preferential tax rate at the exclusion of all others in similar business. Mokanizi also argued that even when 
Cabinet granted an incentive of zero import to fix the food crisis in respect of husked rice as an emergency measure. And I quote, the cheapest rice was retained at 3,500 shillings a kilo, which was still unaffordable for the Ugandans who were heavily struck by famine. Statistics at URA show that rice was being exported out of the country when we were importing it at a reduced tax and at zero tax. This reinforces our argument that rice is not for the poor and importing it doesn't address food shortage, but only profits a few individuals. Even if there was still food shortage, Four Logistics is a profit-motivated private company and not a charitable organization that we would expect to distribute rice to hunger-stricken areas. In an email interview with NTV, Elizabeth Rumanyika Kasenene, speaking for Four Logistics, said, and I quote, We have never received preferential tax treatment from government. We have fully participated in government tax measures targeted at the rice industry in totality. Four Logistics also revealed that the accusations of smuggling are flawed. And I quote, It is not surprising that the allegations come from a competitor that has never imported and is not aware of the measures put in place by URA. We are among the top 25 taxpayers in Uganda. In a separate interview, Uganda Revenue Authority customs boss, Dixon Skateshumba said, and I quote, I don't want to be involved in industry cut fights because competitors are fighting for margins and making lots of claims. Don't involve URA in cut fights. If one importer captured the market at the expense of others, we are a free market economy and it is about competition. No further comment. Dr. Agnes Atima Peya, however, sees the picture differently. In fact, instead of asking for, for tax concessions and what, they should be showing us what investments they are making to increase production. Mm. Why would you import rice in this country when we have so much very fertile land, very fresh water for irrigation even in case you want to irrigate? Why? When a new um, uh, a change in policy is being brought in, it needs to be discussed and debated so that you arrive at a common aligned position that it does not disadvantage or stifle domestic growth, which unfortunately was not done. Idro says Kibimba Limited has benefited from government subsidies and is only sour grapping as other businesses partake of the same cake, comparing it to a person who throws away the ladder after ascending the greasy pole. There has been no consistency. In other words, the industry was not regulated, it was not structured. Now there are attempts to structure it. That doesn't mean that there has not been what you call unilateral decisions. Like when Tilda was given that farm, mm. did he pay for the infrastructure? Do you know the terms in which he got it? So we needed it that time and they got it. When fall came, they did. The company has already issued closure notice to its workers. When NTV visited the farm in Bujiri on Thursday, activity was low as managers and workers said the uncertainty in the sector had cascaded down to the site. However, Investment Minister Evelyn Anita in a letter seen by NTV to the company laughed off the move as a bluff, choreographed blackmail government. In a mocking letter that speaks to the intensity of the fight, for logistics tells Kibimba their farm is located in a wetland, contrary to current government policy, and if they can no longer farm, they should contact their lawyers and discuss the sale of the farm to for logistics. As the raw pulling persists, the heart of the country's rice sector remains shaky. When all is said and done, Uganda's rice farmers have to up their game. Kibimba's installed capacity, for instance, is 49,000 tons, but it only does 15,000 tons. Some say a little competition will tickle these entities out of slumber, as competitors evict them from the comfort zone. This is Kibimba in the eastern district of Bujiri. The entity has grown by leaps and bounds since 1996 when it took over what was a derelict farm from government of Uganda. The entity now employs at least 2,000 Ugandans and sits on 10,000 acres of land. Its success is in tandem with the blossoming success of so many other hundreds of thousands of Ugandans involved in rice production. However, that success story now faces a reality check as government of Uganda state officials stand accused of pampering importers of rice with tax subsidies and waivers that now threaten to wipe out of production local producers of rice. The allegations and counter allegations of importers smuggling rice and bringing in white rice in the stead of brown rice that is allowed under the country's tax regime. However, the importers of rice also accuse entities like Kibimba here of fearing competition 
and raising a false alarm. Any company in Uganda, even if I complained, even if Fuel complained, or any other company complained, no one company now has enough rice for Uganda. No one company has more than 5% production or productivity that is for Uganda. So if one company complains, the other companies will not complain because they can still meet up their rest. So Tilda's fear is that there is smuggling in this rice. That is his fear. But I asked Tilda to bring me the documents. They said, no, I should look for it myself. Now, if he has it, why doesn't he give me? And I really want to, to also add some of these investors who assume that they are coming to a country where everybody has been sleeping and they are the only people who know things. That's not right. And I think we've got to understand and investigate some of those allegations and some of those companies who are too good to be true so that we really understand where they're coming from and what they are up to. Actors like Idro say they are now turning their efforts to fulfilling President Museveni's ambitious dream of a self-sustaining rice sector capable of reaping from the lucrative exports while feeding Ugandan families. But if the country is to protect local infant industry, as was the winds of industrial growth that swept across Japan, United States of America, and the Asian tigers like Singapore and South Korea, transparency and equity must guide the moderation of the tax regime. So far, the president remains a final arbiter as his coterie of officials are sharply polarized in these supremacy fights. Ivan Okuda, NTV.